Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we're gonna to be going over the major bone markings. These are really important to know. We're not gonna be naming particular bones today, but when we do name the bones next chapter, we're going to have to know all the different grooves, bumps, holes, and all these little things on each bone. So knowing the humerus should be the easy part, but then knowing the all the different parts of the humerus, that's the hard part, but it's easier if you have the markings down. So if you know what a tuberosity is, what a tubercle is, and so forth, you can put it together and try to maybe at least guess what the marking is uh, or where it is based on the marking name, uh, maybe the regions around it and so forth. So this, right now, we're not naming bones again. We're going over the major markings and it's important to start being able to identify these major markings because that gives you an idea of you know, muscle ligament attachments, holes for arteries, veins, uh, nerves, uh, things like that. Uh, so we're gonna be going over that today, going over the major list of markings. Uh, so we're using uh, Dr. Captain Jack Marrow here again. We've used him before as our little example. Uh, so the first group I wanted to go over are the projections that are sites of muscle and ligament attachment. So these are little you know, processes that stick out for muscles and ligaments to attach to. So th they come in different forms though. Uh, the first one is a tuberosity. So a tuberosity is a large rounded projection and it may be roughened. So there are three different ones I wanna talk about here. So tuberosity, tubercle, and trochanter. Sometimes uh, they get mixed up a bit. So the best one on Captain Jack here, so Captain Jack's not the most expensive skeleton ever, but he does a great job for, you know, a home-based skeleton right here. So the best example we have of a tuberosity, so a large roughened projection right here on the, uh, so here's the ilium, ischium, pubis, so this is the ischium region of the hip. Uh, so there's a little roughened projection right there, and that is called a tuberosity. Now a tubercle is a small rounded projection or process. So a tubercle isn't as rough or isn't as large or round. So an example of a tubercle that we have would be the adductor tubercle on the femur. Uh, so the on the medial side of the femur, there's a little bump right there. You see that little bump right there? So that would be a tubercle. So there's tubercle, and then right here, so here we have tuberosity. Now over here, we have the other one. So on the femur, this femur is a little twisted <laughs> right here, uh, we have a even larger projection. There's a large projection there and a larger projection there. This bone marking is only found on the femur, and it's tr called the trochanter. It's just a lot larger than a tuberosity and not small enough to be considered a tubercle. Uh, and so there's a greater and lesser trochanter on the femur. There's also a little line that attaches each one. So a line can be, so a line is a narrow ridge of bone less prominent than a crest. So then we needed to find a crest. So here is the iliac crest. Uh, so the wing, the ala part of the hip bone or the ilium. So this is called a crest but it's called the iliac crest. So there's a good example of how knowing the marking, okay, crest, you're looking for a ridge of bone. Iliac, oh, the ilium is a bone on the hip. So iliac crest, you're looking for a narrow ridge of bone on the ilium. So there, with just the name, you can break it down to find out where it is. Um, another thing we have here is an epi condyle. Uh, so an epicondyle is upon a condyle. I know we didn't go over a condyle yet, but we'll talk about that when we get to the articulations. But an epicondyle is usually a part right above the condyles right here. So there would be the lateral uh, epicondyle down here on the femur. So I'll just write that down here. Uh, and then another one we have is a spine. So a spine is a sharp, slender, often pointed, pointed process. So a few examples of the spine, the best one is on here is on the spine. So um, the, there are a couple different processes on the actual vertebrae. So there are seven spinous processes. So there's a spine, there's a, this is the transverse, transverse spine right here. And then you have the spinous process coming off the back of each vertebrae. Each one of those is a spine. So then just knowing the direction and the name will help you name that. And then also a process is then any, so this is the spinous, uh, process. Um, and, oh, I got that mixed up. Uh, so this is just a process. 
Um, so it's just called the spinous process. I got mixed up on my words right there. Um, so this is a process or the spinous process in particular, then this is the transverse process. So here a process, and then the spine is a pointed projection, like right there would be a spine. So, you know, it just mainly comes down to names. So sometimes things are called a spine, some things are called the process, but mainly there's something pointing out. I wouldn't try to twist it up and uh, trick you on between, is this a process or is this a spine? I wouldn't do that. So any process is a spine than a sharp, slender, often pointed one, or I mean, any, uh, any projection is a process and then a more pointier one, I guess, is a spine. But yeah, don't worry about me trying to trick you up on that. You just know if you see the word process or if you see the word spine, it's something that's sticking out. <laughs> so there we have things sticking sticking out right here on this. So there's the, uh, the ischial spine, and then this is the uh, transverse process. This is the spinous process. So there, by saying those names, you get an idea of where they are. All right, so that is the first group here. So I'm going to uh, erase these. Uh, so clear these, uh, go back here, and then we're going to go to the next group. So the next group are the projections that help form joints. Uh, and since we're, we'll move, we'll move up here and flip back around and use this region right here since we get a good shot of the humerus. Uh, so here, you know, the humerus is forming a joint. So what projections are here to help form joints? First of all, we have the head of the humerus. So whenever a bone has a head, that's the upper most proximal part. So this is the head of the humerus is a bony expansion carried on a narrow neck. So then this would be the neck of the humerus. There's also a surgical neck of the, or an, and an anatomical neck on the humerus, but we'll worry about that once we get there. Um, and then I talked about a condyle. So a condyle, now I don't have one right here, so this would just be the articulation here. So if we erase this and move down the arm, so right there would be a condyle. Um, so all of these then are a smooth, uh, uh, a rounded articular projection. Uh, so this, these are all, now these have a specific name, so this one's called the trochlea, but it's still considered a condyle. And so an epicondyle is then what's right above that projection. Another example of a condyle, we can go up here on the jaw. I think I have a better angle right here at the end when I spin it. Yep, so right there, uh, the back of the jaw right there, that tempor temporomandibular joint right there is a condyle as well. Uh, so that, I didn't write that, so condyle, that's how you spell that. Uh, so then also up here, since we're on showing the mandible, not necessarily the jaw, this is also a little arm-like projection. So this arm-like projection right here, this is called a ramus. And then this right here, this is called a notch, but we're going to talk about this uh, when we talk about passageways. Uh, just getting ahead of myself right here. So that's the ramus of the mandible. Then right here is the condyle of the mandible, which forms that round articulation. And then right here is your cheekbone, which is called a zygomatic process. So here, everything will start to coming together then as well. Uh, but these are the main regions uh, for articulations. Another one I didn't mention was a, a faucet, F-A-C. T. A faucet is a nearly flat articular surface. Now, an example of these would be down here where the uh, ribs attach to the vertebrae. Uh, so this flat articular surface, which is a faucet where you know two things can attach or articulate with each other, but just two flat surfaces that form that attachment. So right there would be that faucet on that bone. Okay, so now we move on to the next group. These are now the passage of blood vessels and nerves. So since we're right here, I want to show this one. So this would be a notch. So there's a sciatic notch on the hip as well, but I can show most of these passageways by looking at the skull, the cranial region here. Um, another one is a groove. Now, I just said showing the skull or cranial region would show most of them. There is a groove on the inside of the mandible, so that's... Uh, just a little furrow in the bone, but to also see a groove, we can go down here and flip back around and look at the ribs. And you can kind of see it. Let's move up a bit. So on the, on the underneath side of each rib, 
there's a little groove. There's a little groove rating right here. You can kind of kind of see it in there. And if you look at the ribs, that's how you can know which rib was the superior and inferior side of the rib. So the inferior side of the rib, the one pointing down, has this little groove in it. And that's where blood vessels and things, um, nerves and stuff like that, travel. Uh, and then, so a fissure then, so the best example of a fissure is up here on the, sc the skull. Let's go back. Oh, there we go. There's Jack's face right there, right in the eye orbits. Uh, so a fissure is a narrow slit-like opening. So in the eye orbit here, we have two fissures. So these are fissures. It's, there's a superior and inferior orbital fissures. Uh, now, I can use a couple examples here. So there's one there, there's one there, there's one there. I'm just showing a couple right here. These are small holes. Uh, so a round or oval opening through a bone is called a foramen. So a foramen. Um, so s we'll, there's lots and lots of small little holes in the skull that we're going to learn to love next chapter. Um, so yeah, those are the main, a couple of the main ones that we'll come, we'll come across tons of these. Um, <laughs> so here, this is the supraorbital foramen. This is the infraorbital foramen. And this is the mental foramen. If you remember, this is the mental region. So that makes sense there as well. So all these regional terms, all these markings and stuff, if I just say the marking or the region, it gives you a good idea if you know what that marking looks like, what it's pointing to. Uh, so you can make an educated guess. Uh, some other things we might find here uh, for these. Uh, so right inside here, if we do a, you know, a sagittal section right down through the skull here, there'd be a little pocket inside. It's called, so it's called your frontal sinus. So a sinus is a cavity within a bone, and it's usually you know, air-filled. Uh, so it's filled with air and lined with mucous membranes as well, and they help lighten your skull. So they're found predominantly in the skull. Uh, and then another one is a meatus, which is a canal-like passageway. A good example of a meatus is over here on, right there, I showed it well. Whoops, too far. Right there is your external acoustic Meatus. It's a canal-like passageway here. It's your ear canal. And then the last thing uh, is a fossa. Uh, so, so here, oh, forgot to label this, a meatus. Then the last one is a fossa, which is a shallow basin-like depression in a bone. So we have a couple different examples of fossas. Uh, one, so we have a couple fossas on the scapula. So, you know, we have a fossa, so a flat-like, so shallow-like, basin-like, a little depression here. So there's a, a fossa on the scapula. There's also a fossa in the floor of the cranial vault. Um, so we'll, I don't have the skull open here, but we'll show it then when I go over the skull. And then the other fossa example is on, if we, right here on the hip as the best example of a fossa as well. So right here would be a great example of a fossa. So those are the major markings. There are a few other markings that um, weren't in the initial discussion so far. Uh, just to make sure I got them all. One was a sulcus, which is a deep groove. So we, you know, we we had a groove, which is just a furrow, like right there on the rib. But there, you might also come across a sulcus, which is a deep, narrow groove. Um, uh, let's see if we can see it here. There's a sulcus. See, my, this is where my model might not be great. There should be a sulcus going down the humerus as well. Um, so right, yeah, might be, the angle might be weird on this, so the light might be weird as well. Um, let's see, did I get everything? Crest, fossa, line, spine, ramus, faucet, neck, trochanter, fissure, foramen, sinus, canal, meatus, process. So be able to go through and be able to name them and picture in your mind of what this marking is going to look like. Uh, they're not as bad as you think. You're going to realize how much knowing the different marking names is going to help you on naming the different bones and parts of the bone. Um, but I think that's all I have for today. I know this is, this is a tough one to teach because I'm not actually naming the bones and the parts of the bones, but we're going to see these marking words come up a lot. When we look at just the skull here, lots and lots will come up. And since you made it to the end, I found something in this video that I missed the first time. Ready? Ready? <laughs> he stuck his tongue out. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Wait, wait. Right there. We'll end it right there. So he gave us a little show.
I didn't realize this the first time watching this. And I, I remember I used this video for the uh, anatomical regions or anatomical terms and then also the body regions. And Watson wanted to join. So there he is sticking his tongue out at all of us and saying hello. But all right, that's all I have for today. Uh, if you have any questions on these markings, feel free to reach out to me. But if not, I hope you all have a great day and bye bye. Thank you.